Um, first, I'd like to start with um, a statement. In 1983, Maurice Bishop and a number of his colleagues were machine gunned to death, and their bodies were never found. So the documentary film that I'll be talking about today is called Forward Ever, The Killing of a Revolution, uh, directed and produced by Bruce Paddington. So I'm going to show you the trailer before we get into the timeline of events. Our duty is to continue the struggle against imperialism. Our duty is to continue to build our Grenada Revolution and ensure that we, as one Grenada people, small as we are, will forward that wider, meaningfully, and will ensure the unity of our people. that were focused on in the film. And these are, of course, historical figures important to the Grenadian Revolution. Um, Eric Gehry, uh, which was the first prime minister of Grenada uh, when they achieved the independence from Great Britain. Uh, it coincided with um, the civil strife in Grenada. There were a lot of uh, social problems like unemployment, uh, violence, and um, so Maurice Bishop, who is the leader of the New Jewel movement, uh, he was the opposing party that didn't uh, agree with uh, Eric Gehry's regime. So he, him and his movement um, overthrew the government and they established their own political party, uh, along with another member of the political party, uh, Bernard, Bernard Cord. So he was a, a politician uh, in the People's Revolutionary Government and prior the New Jewel Movement. So here I have a timeline of events. Um, the first, the first th three points are bolded, and those are the points that the film primarily um, focuses on. Uh, although it's the dates are quite close in in comparison, there is a larger um, scale of events that happen before um, it takes place. So before it took place, um, when Maurice Bishop became the prime minister, um, he was the, oh, before he became in power, he was opposing the prior government. And then he, so he basically um, took over and he, he was a socialist, so he seek to to improve the social conditions of the country. Um, he brought over Cuban doctors, he opened hospitals, he opened schools, and he was very ambitious, and his, his, his connection to other countries, like Cuba, like the Soviet Union, <coughs> were concerning to other countries like the United States, because they felt like it could possibly undermine the social construct of the Caribbean. And so he was put on house arrest by another member of the, of the political party, uh, Bernard Court. So during this time, he, um, he was very, he was very, um, he was very well received by the citizens of Grenada because he was a socialist. Um, he was very charming, he was very polite, and he did a lot for the people. So when he was put on house arrest and he was being overthrown, basically backstabbed by somebody from his own party, um, they all rallied in the streets. So it was, some, it was estimated 30,000 
citizens came to alleviate him from house arrest and they took him to Fort, I believe it's Fort George, and they overthrew the military. And <laughs> so the main event that the film describes in, in depth is from this event where he was put on house arrest, from the time he was on house arrest to the time he was executed. So the, the military, there's two bases in the same, within the same region in Grenada, and they they came because they over because they took over one uh, military base. Uh, the other soldiers came in a tank um, in order to have them surrender. And there's a lot of speculation um, about who shot first, whether it was the soldiers or whether it was the political party that took over the base. So uh, the documentary film interviews a lot of people who were actually part of the, of the actual event that took place. And then prior to, I'm sorry, after uh, Bishop was executed, um, the US government invaded Grenada. So yeah, you, a lot of people in the US uh, were against the troops actually invading Grenada, and there was a lot of protests, and this was during uh, Ronald Reagan's regime. So yeah, you can see Ronald Reagan. Okay, so the director, the director is Bruce Paddington. Um, he's a, yeah, so he's the co-designer and lecturer in the BA film program, program at our very own um, University of the West Indies. So he wrote the strategic plan for the establishment of the Trinidad and Tobago Film Company, where he works as a con consultant. Uh, he's also the founder of the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival. Um, he's the founder and director of the New World Film Center and founder of his very own production company, Abandon Productions. Although he directed this film, he's primarily a producer. So yeah, documentary convention. So the documentary is primarily linear narrative, and uh, me, the reason why I say primarily linear, linear narrative is because the majority of the film takes place in chronological order because it is according to history. However, in the beginning of the film, his mother is interviewed, uh, sorry, Maurice Bishop's mother is interviewed, and she states that she has three children, but now she only has two. So it sets the tone for the rest of the movie um, that he was killed and it, the audience wonders why was he killed. So yeah, there are other documentary conventions um, present in this movie, actuality uh, footage, voiceover, realism, because it did feature a lot of actual footage from the film. <coughs> Uh, diegetic and non-diegetic sound, so cultural music was uh, present, and it was a very uh, powerful piece within the movie because um, there were songs pertaining, there were calypso songs pertaining to the actual revolution itself and, uh, and Maurice Bishop. Uh, voice of authority, events recorded in history, so there were a lot of uh, broken up text within the film that sort of help you develop the timeline of, of the his, historical events more. Uh, open-ended. It's open-ended because uh, it interviews both parties of, of, the, of each political side. So people who were for Maurice Bishop, people who were, who were in the fort when the fort were, was attacked, who managed to survive, and also a soldier that was part of the opposition who were overthrowing and ultimately executing five of the uh, political party members.
going to end uh, with Grenada's motto, ever conscious of God we aspire, build and advance as one people. I support the Grenada re Revolution. And my questions for you guys are, why do you think, why do you think the bodies were never found? So five members of the political party were lined up and executed at one of the forts by the military, but their bodies were never found even 30 years after. Stuff you there. Okay, I just have one more question. It's kind of important. Okay. okay. So, if Trinidad were to have a revolution in the future, what would be the key issues? Who would it involve, and how would it take place? It could be like a coup. This is this is a little more. Um, that's a little more informational for me too because I'm not. Do you think we familiar. head into a revolution? No, I said if. If there were to be a revolution. <laughs> well, the, the reason why I asked 